Hello, I'm Bill Wong with Electronic Design, and I'm speaking with Richard Jenicky of AMD. We're going to be talking about embedded graphics, in particular, uh, the latest Radeon. Could you tell us about this? Well, yes, we're really excited. This uh, Radeon E760, uh, 6760, is uh, the greatest embedded GPU we've ever produced, uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, it was only about three years ago that AMD started producing uh, GPUs specifically for the embedded market instead of uh, just for using our mobile Radeons. And what we do for the embedded market is we, we uh, put memory and uh, memory together on the same uh, substrate as uh, the ASIC and make it into a BGA package so that it makes it really easy for embedded customers to put it down on a board. And this latest Radeon goes a step further than we've ever gone. It uh, has a gigabyte of GDR5 memory on there, the largest memory and the fastest GPU, but what the latest generation adds is the ability to have six displays, six independent displays from the same chip, and it is compatible with OpenCL and Direct Compute so that we can use this for heterogeneous computing. Uh, put it together with uh, an AMD processor, or even an Intel processor, and you get heterogeneous computing uh, doing OpenCL. So this is an MCM, a multi-chip module, that has our uh, AMD Radeon GPU uh, 6700 series GPU mounted onto the substrate. But in addition, there's also four memory chips that together form a gigabyte of GDR5 memory and they're all mounted on the same substrate and this substrate is, uh, has BGA mounting on the back. It's not a board level product, it's a chip level product that you can mount directly onto your motherboard for the, the lowest cost and the best thermal solutions. The ATI Radeon E6760 is about 50% faster than its predecessor, the E4690. In the embedded world, it's particularly useful to think about that this GPU is so powerful that it can uh, replace other types of embedded chips such as DSPs or FPGAs, especially when you need good floating point performance. So, how many cores does this thing have? Well, it has 480 individual SIMD processing cores, and that running at 600 megahertz gives you 576 gigaflops of processing power. That's fantastic. Now, you mentioned OpenCL. Um, also, isn't there a, a CUDA programming environment that works with this as well? No, uh, we've chosen to use only the open, so, uh, the, the open standards and not any of the proprietary ones. There was, uh, AMD does have a proprietary uh, language that we called uh, CAL or sometimes close to the metal is the lower level one that people may be familiar with. Uh, and OpenCL is built on top of some of that technology, but what we're really promoting are the open standards. Uh, we see that, especially in the embedded world, that people want to be able to have a choice and have the uh, knowledge that it's going to be around, their programming language is going to be around for a long time. Oh, that's great, because I know that a lot of uh, new tools that are coming out, like uh, from MathWorks, the MATLAB supports OpenCL as well. That's right. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, independent tool vendors, um, anything from uh, debuggers to profilers and uh, higher level uh, libraries that are built on OpenCL. Now, can an application take advantage of both OpenCL and the graphics at the same time? Yes, uh, you can, especially when you're running uh, in uh, dual graphics mode, you can have uh, this hooked up to a processor and you can run OpenCL uh, on the, the CPU, OpenCL on the GPU, and, uh, and you can partition part of the GPU off and you can run graphics as well. Especially if you're using something that doesn't heavily use the, the 3D engine, that's where the computing goes. Uh, if you're using the UVD engine for the high def video, you know, obviously you're, there's not a lot of conflict. You only use a little bit of the, of the uh, 3D engine for the, for the uh, video decoding. So there leaves a lot left over for general purpose computing. Now, in terms of uh, things like streaming video, uh, is this processor now more efficient in terms of um, 
uh, how much power it's going to use when you're just watching videos as opposed to playing something like a 3D game? Uh, yes, so uh, this processor has our third generation of universal video decoding and with that we've uh, not only added a few more uh, formats in, in addition to uh, uh, MPEG-4, uh, you know, H.264, uh, VC1s, we now have uh, uh, DivX, for example, but even the existing ones, there's uh, broader uh, support in the hardware for more steps of the video decode, so that the load on the, the GPU, uh, the main part of the GPU is lower, and the load on the CPU is lower, so it's more power efficient as well. Excellent. So for people that are wanting to design this into their system, where can they find more information on the web? Well, the best place is to go to the embedded portion of the AMD website. Uh, so that's www.amd.com slash embedded. Great. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Good to talk to you, Bill.